It's time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope. From the CBS television news staff, Larry LeSeur and Winston Burdett. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Walter Williams, Under Secretary of Commerce. Mr. Williams, you've been a teacher, a successful businessman, the chairman for the Committee of Economic Development, and now Under Secretary of Commerce. What do you think is the nation's economic health on this first day of the new year, sir? Well, I wonder, Larry, if before we consider, consider the condition of the economic health of the country today, if it wouldn't be worthwhile for it to go back a little while and see where we have been on this economic road. Uh, if we, uh, if it may help to get perspective. If you remember, back in 1939, uh, war broke out in Europe. That caused us to become active here. Then, of course, as France was about to fall in Europe, we had a, a, a very uh, exciting time of building up our own defenses. Then came our own participation in the war itself. And following that, after the war was over, we had all this pent up uh, accumulation of shortages together with a lot of money that had been made by our wage earners. And so we had uh, 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 an active period of time then. And then following that, we had the Korean War. The result is that from 1939 to 1953, we've had 13 or 14 years of rather continuous boom times. Now that gives you an idea of where we have been uh, and I think perhaps that may help to uh, give us a starting point as we consider where we are now and where we're going to go from here. Well, Mr. Williams, the uh, Korean armistice is now a, a fait accompli, an accomplished fact. Where do you think the nation's economy is right now? Well, uh, I, think, uh, I think as we take a look at the conditions that prevail today, we might uh, uh, there again think in terms of short range and long range. If we think in terms of long range, uh, it's easier. Uh, because I think when we think in terms of the population growth of our country, we're gaining at the rate of about 28 million people in the, uh, in per decade, and think of the buying requirements that all those people mean, the houses and the clothes and the food and everything else, that stimulates the imagination as to the kind of an economy we're going to have. And then in terms of, of our technological development, I think that few Americans really appreciate the tremendous gains that are taking place technologically. Te technologically. I have in my hand here a little gadget which uh, I asked Dr. Aston, who is the head of the uh, National Bureau of Standards down in Washington, part of our Department of Commerce the other day, what that little gadget would mean economically uh, to our country, let's say over the next 10 years. And he said billions of dollars. Now I haven't got time to, to go into that tonight, but the point is, this is what is called a wafer stack, uh, sometimes referred to as ticker toy, and it's a, it's a shortcut in terms of electronic, electronic development, which will have the effect of cutting costs and speeding up production. Now then, when we think in terms of technological development and our population gains, I think nobody can come to any other conclusion but that over the long range period, we've got a tremendous uh, gain in store for us and our uh, standard of living for our American people is going to be higher and higher year by year. Well, Mr. Williams, what about the short range? Yeah, it's often uh, harder to predict the short range, yeah. but what's the economic well, outlook as I said, for this I year, 1954? the easier way out first. Now then, short range, uh, I think we would have to, as we try objectively, uh, to see what has happened in the last few months. Then we get some forecast, perhaps, as to what may be expected. There are some of the barometers that have uh, looked not so good. I think that perhaps one of the best ways to analyze the condition that we've been through, been passing through is to look back about a year. Uh, beginning uh, the early part of this year, we found ourselves with inventories constantly going up at uh, an accelerating rate. Uh, but at the same time, we found sales rather steadily going down. That, that has been gone on uh, for a good part of this year. Well, as long as you have that kind of a gap developing, uh, of course, you are bound to have a certain amount of readjustment. Now, the encouraging thing about that is that within the last two months, October and November to be precise, we found sales taking a turn upward, and we found this inventory accumulation turning downward. And I think that all of us who are in interested in these matters are going to watch what happens with respect to the Christmas sales with a great deal of interest, because well, that will have a great deal of bearing, I think, on what the next 
uh, uh, a few months we're, go we're go are going to be. Well, Mr. Williams, do you think then that 1954 is going to be a period of readjustment or adjustment? I think we have already had readjustment. One of the barometers which I think uh, is particularly interesting is uh, the barometer known as the length of the work week. Now, actually, that the, the length, of, length of the work week has been coming down for almost a solid 12 months. During the 48-49 uh, uh, adjustment period, it came down for a period of 12 months before it turned back up again. Now, this time, it began last December, actually, and has been going down steadily uh, almost ever since. Some have said, well, that's a matter of uh, changing from, a, from an overtime economy to a normal time economy. Now, it's true it puts less money in the pockets of our workers, but it also is true that it cuts costs because the first thing that an employer does when there's a little slackening is to cut out overtime. That means the cost of producing his merchandise. Well, Mr. Williams, but how do you account for the fact that the cost of living index is creeping up and yet there has been a fall in farm food prices? Well, <coughs> uh, I want to keep this on a nonpartisan basis if I can, but when you, when you ask about this uh, price curve, it necessitates taking a look at conditions which prevailed before January 20th and conditions which have prevailed since January 20th. Now, actually, there were about $81 billion worth of, uh, shall we say, COD items, which had been committed for by Congresses one, two, and three years back, uh, going out of the Korean incident, for the purchase of uh, airplanes and uh, aircraft carriers and tanks and all the rest of it. Those, but, but at the time that Congress made those commitments, no appropriations were made. And those appropriations have to be made and are being made now as those items become completed and they're laid on our doorstep as COD items for payment. Well, now then, that 81 billions of dollars, the two peak years for payout, are in 1954 and 1955. And until we absorb those uh, uh, items, we have had to pump in uh, uh, deficit financing, and we're still having deficit financing. Those factors all have to do with the price level. But I think the particularly significant thing is, and it's a point I'd like to drive home with emphasis, is that as a result of the team work by Congress on the one hand and the administration, 13 billions of dollars of what they call budget expenditure requests were cut from the request level of the preceding administration. Now then, as you cut those things, th those expenditures down, and we finally get to the point where we have a, ha are having a, uh, a more nearly a balanced budget, and in terms with, in, term, in turn, we are having monetary policies and debt management policies which are being pursued by the present administration, then you will have the price level come under control. And it is true that while there, it, it is still inching up slightly, the main reason for that is that that rentals, uh, medical services, and transportation items have lagged. Actually, food prices, the index of food prices, is less than it was a year ago. Well, what about the farmers this year, uh, Mr. Williams? What is their prospect economically? If you will look at the chart for farmers' prices, you will find that his, his prices began to drop. He, he hit the peak in about November or December of 1951. That's uh, uh, two and a half, three years ago. Now, this, uh, during this year, there has still been a drop, but the drop has only been two or three percent, and uh, there was about an 18 percent drop in the two years prior. Now, those prices seem to have pretty well leveled out, so that the purchasing power of the farmer, I think, may pretty reasonably uh, be expected to be pretty stable this coming year. On top of that, as you know, the, the, uh, the uh, farmer, the Agriculture Advisory Commission is bringing into its report and I'm uh, dead sure that the, uh, that, the, uh, that the recommendations of that committee, uh, no doubt mo most of which will be uh, enacted into law by Congress, will mean uh, stability and uh, considerable benefit for the farming. Well, what about the possibilities of a recession in 1954 and the latter part of it? Why do you say the latter part of it? Because you said we're still pumping out a lot of money into the economy from previous <laughs> administrations. Well, let's, let's get this straight. It isn't just a matter of what government does. It's a matter of what a lot of the rest of us do. Now, actually, uh, it is interesting to note that, and I think one of the most encouragement things, encouraging things is that plant and equipment investment, which ran at a high level during 1953, 
uh, is projected for this coming year now, 1954, at an actual, for the first quarter, the figure of our member is 27.96 billions of dollars, 27.96, practically 28 billions of dollars. That is uh, less than the third quarter was, but it's actually considerably higher than it was the first quarter of a year ago. Now, if, if businessmen uh, and uh, those who have to do with the controlling of plant and equipment investment keep that up, that has nothing to do with government, you see. Then that makes a great contribution uh, towards uh, keeping our economy rolling. Well, as a final question, Mr. Williams, as uh, Under Secretary of Commerce, can you give any advice to the average citizen on how to keep his own economic situation healthy in 1954? Well, I think that the, uh, the individual uh, has perhaps uh, more of an opportunity to uh, contribute to the stability of the economy than maybe he realizes. Because in our kind of an economy, where the individual uh, uh, doesn't have to work from uh, dawn till dark just barely to keep a certain amount of food in his stomach, but he, he has the right of disc the power of discretionary spending. If he keeps that consumer spigot running, then the retailer, the wholesaler, the jobber, right back to the factory, everybody's kept busy. And in that way, he contributes very much uh, <coughs> towards helping to keep our economy so sound. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Williams. It's been a pleasure to have you here tonight. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and Winston Burdett. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Walter Williams, Under Secretary of Commerce. Did you follow any of the bowl games on television today? Now, if so, you may be interested to know that this year, as for years past, all of the major postseason football championship games, the Rose Bowl, the Rice Bowl, the Orange Bowl, and all the others, were officially timed by Longines watches, like this high-precision Longines chronograph. You might ask why. Why is Longines so generally used for official timing in championship sports? Now, the answer is the great accuracy and the complete dependability which is inbuilt into every Longines watch. And just so, all Longines watches are engineered and manufactured to provide the greater accuracy and longer life for which Longines watches are world famous. So when next you need a watch, either for yourself or as an important gift, remember these facts. And remember too that you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as seventy-one fifty, Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. Broadcast on behalf of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longine and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.